All right, so last week, Google rolled out big changes that are coming to the search results. They're incorporating AI and a lot of bloggers and a lot of niche site owners are kind of freaking out about this, right? What does this mean to our traffic? Are we gonna get less clicks? If Google is just giving the answers on the search results page, then why are people gonna click to our websites? What happens to our traffic? What happens to our ad revenue? What happens to our income? Is this the end of SEO? Is it the end of blogging in niche sites? You know, I think there's a lot to unpack about what happened last week. So in this video, you know, let's try to have a, a tempered conversation. You know, the truth is nobody knows the impact yet until the changes roll out and we can measure the differences, the changes in traffic. But it, it's fun to speculate. It's fun to take a look at the preview of what Google showed us and try to guess what, what will this mean for us? Is this the end of SEO? All right, let's look at some of the changes that Google previewed because that's the best way for us to kind of do an analysis, okay? So Google showed showed several examples, several, several screenshots, right? So here's one, what planet is most, most similar to Earth? And we can see the generative AI result is right here, right? Which is basically a featured snippet, okay? This reminds me a lot of the drama that came when featured snippets first came out and people were freaking out that, you know, that's gonna take away traffic, right? Because the answer is on the search results page itself. Why do they have to click back to our post? And it turns out, you know, getting featured snippets drove more traffic to our sites to the point that people started optimizing for the featured snippet. So all of that doom and gloom around the featured snippet really turned out to be for nothing. And when we look at this, excuse me, this preview over here, right, that's just a featured snippet, right? And then what's most interesting to me are the three links to the side of the result, okay? So we've got three results. These are organic listings with links, right? So in this specific screenshot, they're kind of just shuffling the results they're they're tweaking with the featured snippet well yes we have an answer here but we also have the organic results to the right now there's another example over here right so plants for a dark room so the ai gives it a list of five examples each with one sentence right now will that satisfy the the full intent of the searcher Maybe, right? Maybe they don't feel the need to click anymore. Again, we're not going to know until we can process the data. But, you know, if I'm looking at this search, I'm still probably going to click into one of these results to get a, a, a better picture of the answer that I'm looking for, right? So it's giving us, again, the snapshot of the answer in this result, but we've still got these prominently featured, I might add, organic results directly to the right, and there's three results. So to me, this is not that bad um, of a search result. If I'm a publisher, yes, there's an expanded snippet, but we do see the three organic listings to the right. And then to kind of go further on that point, Google, this is from Google's documentation on how SGE works. And it's talking about the AI powered snapshots, which is the featured snippet answer. But pay attention to this language here, right? These snapshots serve as a jumping off point for users, right? SGE will show links to resources that corroborate the information in the snapshot. So people can check the information themselves and explore further. This allows people to dig deeper and discover a range a diverse range of content. So, you know, I don't know if, if Google was throwing a bone to publishers and bloggers and niche site owners who are rightfully worried, you know, what about my traffic? What, what about me being the source 
and Google saying, hey, these AI answers are just a starting point. We're still going to show the organic links back to your site. So I think this is a really good sign as well. All right, so let's switch gears for a second. I wrote about this in my newsletter this morning, and then I saw that Barry at Search Engine Roundtable had also written a post on this. And let's take a step back again, because the fear here is that Google is going to give the answer to everything on the search result page itself, on the SERP. And what about publishers? What about the traffic? What about the clicks? But we need to think about how Google makes money. Okay, Google is not a technology company. They're not an AI company. They make money by selling ads. They're an ad company, much like Facebook is, okay? And they're one of the biggest companies in the world and the vast majority of their income comes from ads. And that's what Barry talks about here, right? How Google makes money. And when we think about this, Google needs people to publish ads, to pay for ads on the search results page itself, right? That's the bulk of how they make money. But Google also sells ads on websites, on niche sites, on blogs, on humongous sites. So again, is Google really going to destroy their revenue model, how they make money? Um, no, right? They're, they're definitely not. It just doesn't make any sense. And then they talk about that in the announcement. Let me pull that up. Right? So it's, it's in Google's best interest to not give away all of the information in the SERPs. And they call this out in their announcement, right? As search applies AI, search ads will continue to play a critical role. In this new experience, advertisers will continue to have the opportunity to reach potential customers along their search journeys. Google needs people clicking on ads, clicking on organic results to serve them ads this way. And again, I think, uh, you know, Barry wrote the article on that, but I think a lot of people are missing this very obvious point of view, right? Google's not chat GPT who is monetizing right now with a $20 per month subscription and they don't serve ads on ChatGPT. That's not how Google works. Google's not gonna start charging people a monthly subscription to use Google, right? That makes no sense. They're gonna continue to be a gajillion dollar company by serving ads. And, and ads are the most important part of their business. They're calling it out here in the guidance. And I think as publishers, that should be a big relief. Now, all that said, going forward, right? And, and search is always changing. SEO is always changing. You've got to adapt, okay? So what does this mean going forward? How do we rank in Google? How do we show Google that our content is worthy of being ranked? Now, I've been talking about this on my email list for a long time, right? I, there's a, a gigantic sea change in my opinion, coming specifically to the niche site game. Not necessarily bloggers, because most bloggers already share their perspective. They already share their experiences. So I think in that way, they have a leg up. But if you think about you know, how niche sites create content and try to rank and try to get traffic, let's be honest, it's, it's not by offering the best firsthand experience. It's not by offering the best firsthand expertise. A lot of it, frankly, is publishing as much content as possible for as cheaply as possible, going after long tail keywords and publishing average content. And that's not a criticism. I've obviously done that myself and for a very long time and still, you know, to a certain degree, that still works. But if we're talking about future pacing, where Google wants us to go at least with content, it's gonna be from sharing our firsthand experience, our firsthand expertise, doing the thing that we write about on our site, right? So I've got a new grilling and barbecue website out. And you know, if this was a year ago and I was trying to grow this as a niche site, I would be outsourcing all the content to an agency. I wouldn't be doing the thing that I'm writing about, right? So I'm doing recipes, hands-on recipes. I'm doing hands-on product reviews. Even the informational type 
keywords that I'm going after, like how long does steak uh, last in the fridge, right? That's something you would typically outsource to a content agency for like four cents per word. You know, in my opinion, if you're gonna go after that keyword, you kind of have to do the thing. You've gotta buy a piece of steak, put it in the fridge and check it for three or four or five or six days and document, you know, on day four, it grew mold and that's when it went bad, right? Actually doing the thing that you're writing about. And, and Google calls this out um, down here when they're trying to surface experience content, right? What's most helpful, um, so when it comes to what's most helpful out of all the information out there, we know that for so many questions, you wanna hear what other people have to say, right? In the coming weeks, when you search for something that might benefit the experiences of others, you may see a perspectives filter, which you can see right here, right? So for some queries, they're gonna have a little filter at the top and you're gonna get a lot of videos or a lot of forums or a lot of first person experience. I think this is a big change um, right. So in addition to making it easier to find authentic perspectives, right, we're improving how we rank results in search overall with a greater focus on content with unique expertise and experience. And this makes sense when you think about this as we're in this AI moment, right, where we can blast out a bunch of content using Koala or ChatGPT or whatever writer that has no personality, it has no experience, it has no expertise. So how does Google fight against that AI content, right? They do it with first-hand experience, first-hand expertise, content created by people. And, and, they, and they talk about it here, they talk about, you know, finding hard to find, you know, health information in hard to find places, such as a little known blog. Uh, but where they're going with this is, you know, you need to build a brand, right? The, I think the days of the old ditch site ways of going after every single stupid long tail keyword, you know, blasting thousands of pages, I, to an extent it can still work, but that's definitely not where Google wants to go, right? They want to hear insights from others to help inform their decisions. Uh, and here's another piece about ads. And then, so this was an example from their presentation. You know, it was kind of a, a demo of someone doing a back and forth search on kind of what to wear in Miami or something like that. And, you know, first they asked about dresses and then in the demo, they uh, follow up question or a follow up chat. Well, what about shoes? And Google surfaced a video. I don't know if this is Instagram or TikTok or YouTube, probably YouTube shorts. Right, so that's a real, I'm assuming, a real person with a real brand who knows a lot about shoes and this is the type of content Google is gonna be surfacing, I think, going forward. And I think that's important to think about, right? Not just having some you know, anonymized niche site with no authors and no one knows who's behind it, there's no real expertise, actually doing the thing that you're writing about. And then from a content format, I think we're going to see a huge change in that as well. You know, a lot of people are uncomfortable getting on a video, getting on TikTok, getting on YouTube shorts or Instagram reels. But for a lot of queries, a lot of keywords, that's the best content. It might be a short video. And, you know, to kind of future proof your site, you're going to have to think about getting in to video, right? The, the types of content or the content formats, I think is gonna be a big change as well. So everyone's been freaking out about AI. Is this the end of SEO? Is this the end of Google? You know, I think overall on balance, what Google demoed last week is actually good news. It's basically a juiced up feature snippet. snippet. They're still linking to sources, right? There's now three sources in the featured, featured snippet spot. Google's doubled down on, you know, we're still an ad company, ads are important, sending traffic is important. It's really just staying on top of things, seeing where these changes are gonna have an impact. And for me, you know, I think a big change is gonna be number one, experience and expertise, first hand experience, doing the thing that you're writing about on your site, number one, and then number two is content 
formats. A lot of search queries are better served with video. And, you know, I think for a lot of folks, that's going to be the next step, right? Everyone's comfortable sitting behind their keyboard and writing content. It's a lot more uncomfortable to get the phone up in front of your face and do a quick video like this. But I think if you want to build a brand, if you want to succeed in the future of search, that's where we're going.